I've been following Dice for years now. And then when we jumped into the platform, he was one of the guys we had to sit down with and talk. Coming soon, we're going to sit down with him on that industry's chopping it up. And we're going to really sit down and talk what's really going on. Now, I saw Dice was outside with your man, Meat Mills. Y'all hear all the stuff that's... Yeah. Yeah. Already know I like that shit you said about that day one shit. Fuck that day one shit. I had like 90 day one change on me. I only got like six, seven left. I used to believe in that shit. I don't even believe in that shit no more. I believe in Man, we are here, man. You know, we had a good yeah. time out here in Brooklyn. We got uh, got a chance to go see East New York. You know, that is crazy over there, man. I got to tell you that, man. It's a different place over there. Different vibes. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> and you know what? That's what makes... You know what? What we bring into the table so authentic because I don't really don't see these niggas outside with these niggas. This is I'm trying to bring back those old school DVD looks. Go out right. to the hood and you know see what's popping. And you know I can tell. Back in you guys' days, she I can tell you guys me. had that place turned upside down. Speechless, my nigga. Speechless. <laughs> <you> know, speechless. Hundred <laughs> percent. All right, man. So you know. Let's start right. from there, man. Let's start from that's a good place to start from, man. Let's start from there. Let's the start from place. where it all started, man. Where did it all start, my man? Yo, I'm gonna give it right to the point, man. I knew you was gonna ask me that, so I'm gonna get right to it. Back in like 1999, East New York, you know, Brooklyn period, New York City period was out of control. You know what I mean? So, you know, we would be outside doing our normal one two, kicking it, one two thing. I ain't gonna put too many people business in the street, but Clark Kent pulled up one night to um, holler at who he was hollering at. You know what I'm saying? One of my close friend of mine's family member. You know what I'm saying? And um, we was out there sh kicking that Willie Bobo shit. You know what I'm saying? Rapping and doing young nigga shit. He stumbled upon me, heard what I was talking about. I think I said a line like some old school shit like, y'all niggas is like Mrs. Doubtfires. I doubt you fire your gun. The nigga turned back and was like, oh, what was that, little nigga? I, I oh, God. shit. I, Yo, I, I can't lie. That. I swear to God, B. I can't lie. I swear to Dude, God. You got right to the source. That's it. I got to tell you that. That's it. You got right to it, man. It I got to give it to you. Yeah, no, because. Yeah, no, because when I, you know, the, we got to lead up to that part. I want to talk about Ray. Brooklyn, seven, eight years old, nine, ten years old, jumping off the porch. I want to start from there. I, I'm going to keep it a buck. I didn't jump off the porch that early. You know what I'm saying? Eight years old, I was still in the confines of my mother. Single parent mom. You know, she handling how she handled it, trying to hold us down, taking us to where she was taking us to, to church and all kinds of things of that nature. I didn't get off the porch until I'm about 14, 15 years old. So eight years, eight year old Ray, I was just really trying to figure out how life was. You know what I mean? I had no dad. He wasn't there. It was just mama, my brothers in the streets and who else was trying to raise us in that community type shit. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. No, the only reason why I ask that is because, you know, all of that leads up to where we are now. Because, you know, every a lot of the artists, if, if you're a real artist and authentic, like I know you are. You know, a lot of that pain, because, you know, before we even got on the interview, you know, we was talking about Tone's beats and talking about production. And you saying, I know Tone got that pain. Facts. So that's why I want to start from the beginning, because this is pretty much where all the pain is from. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Without a, without a doubt. Um, Yeah, it was hard. It was rough. You know, very, very volatile neighborhood, very territorial, you know, so you had to be about something, you know. If you wasn't, you'd get ate up like a dog. That You know what I mean? You couldn't survive there. You know what I'm saying? My mother was tough. She's a beautiful Costa Rican woman. She she came up in foster care. So she all, all she knew was, you know, try to make a better way for us. But four boys, one of us is going to turn out to be, you know, 
the black sheep. So ultimately that, that was me. But you know, my big brother first, then it handed, he handed that shit over to me. <laughs> what else, swag? Yeah, so not having that kind of um the proper upbringing brought a lot of uh tensions, brought a lot of animosity, brought a lot of rebellious, you know, ways of thinking and stuff and things of that nature. So ultimately, you know. That shit drove me into the streets. You know what I'm saying? That's how I got out my aggressions and things of that nature. Outside of playing ball and shit, you know, I still couldn't, I still couldn't manage to keep my head on the swivel at times. Got kicked out of or superintendent suspended out of every school I was in. You know what I mean? Just trying to find my way. So a lot of that pain was because I most now that I know what it is today, it was because I ain't have a pops. And um just seeing a lot of the things that I saw out there wasn't normal. I seen my first person get smoked right in front of me. I'm 13, 12 years old. They used to pick out bodies in the back. Anybody that knew or that's familiar with East New York knew about 292 Park back in the days. It was the tundra. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. You know, you could wake up and look outside the back William, the, the back window, feds is out there looking for looking for shit. You know what I mean? Picking up bodies, all kinds of stuff. It was crazy. So that's all I seen. So that shit was kind of like natural to me. You know what I mean? Just pain. I thought that's what life was about, was just pain. So it didn't get greater until later, but I guess we'll we'll move along with that as the uh, interview goes. You know what I'm saying? No, definitely. Damn, you said, you said in the, this park, let's talk about this park. Why was this park so dangerous that, you know, what is this, the, the early 90s? Early 80s, early 80s, early 80s, early 90s, late 90s, until they, re, until they uh, remodeled it. But it still was crazy in the 2000s, you know what I'm saying? It was just a lot of negative aggressions, a lot of um, negative personalities. You ultimately, you had personalities that were positive, but for the most part, everybody was trying to, you know, take advantage of what they could take advantage of and, you know, and come up the best way they know how. It was nothing but survival mode there. You had to get, you had to eat. Or get eight in the live. So you had to be a beast. You know what I mean? And that park was it's called the Deuce. It's Homicide Central. That's what they call yeah. it. Homicide Central. Yeah, they had basketball right. tournaments and stuff in there. Part of or they it. couldn't do no tournaments in there. No, they did back then but in the beginning, it was two courts. It was two hoops. And that's all it was. And everybody had their names. The official cats had their names tatted on the floor of the basketball hoop. You know what I'm saying? It was like Coach. It was Ebo. It was Marlo. A whole heap of other names. You know what I'm saying? But they they, they, they was the only ones getting run. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. They was the only ones getting run. And the tournaments didn't come into the park. I remodeled in maybe 2000 and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So before that, fuck no. No tournaments ever. Tournaments was running from the police. <laughs> That's the tournament. That's a fact. That so, was the tournament. <coughs> so, <coughs> sorry, I'm blowing his gas. It sound like that. It sound Shout like out, it's that. Cali Heights is providing us with that gas. Shout out right. to them, hundred percent. Yeah. So, um, what 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 school would you say you went to? I went to two ninety two. I went to two ninety two. So the 292 is the Deuce Park? Yes. Oh, my God. So It's so in my dude, backyard. It's in my backyard. Crazy. It's behind my building. It was my, it's behind my building. Wow. I grew up in that park. Everybody that know me know I grew up in that park. I seen yeah. everything. That's everything. crazy. So um, now, uh, East New York, around this time, we talking uh, 80s. Early, early, early 80s. Early 90s. Now, yes. are there anybody that's like, in the game at that time around your area, or this is straight, or just oh, straight yeah. streets, the hustlers and no, the hell yeah, there was a few. Um, I remember Dodge Effects. They used to be around the right there, right around the corner on um Picking in Vermont. Dodge Effects, I love them dudes. I love Dodge Effects. Uh, who else used to Blase Blase and shit like that? Facts. Um, although I didn't know he was, but Az wasn't out yet. But Az from my hood too. You know what I'm saying? Word. Growing up, I used to think AZ was from Queens, but AZ from East New York. The no, I always thought AZ was from Queens. Yeah, but he's from, from the from Brooklyn. That's crazy. He's from, he's from the notorious Bama houses. 
ask anybody about them projects from Brooklyn or East New York alone. You got to be from there to step your foot in there because growing up, I grew up on Pennsylvania Avenue. That was the fucking sector. You go on that side of Pennsylvania ass, you're getting touched. You come on this side of Pennsylvania ass, you're getting touched. That's how that's how we live. It's very territorial. You know what I'm saying? So that's how it went down. It was like, yo, you go over there, you know what time it is. They come over here, they know what time it is. It was one of them situations. And I grew up right in the middle, dead center of that bitch. So I seen everything. That's crazy. It was a so part of a lot. You know what I'm saying? You know, but by the grace of God, you know what I'm saying? But I'm all praises to the most high. Niggas beat a lot of that shit, you know what I'm saying? Made their way, found their way, however way, lost a lot of friends. Right. A whole heap of friends. A lot of niggas is in jail. Yo, know, I'm one of the ones that considered, you know, that made it out that fucking obstacle. Although I still go there, because you can see, you saw, I'm still home. You mm -hmm. know what niggas know where they can find me, back over there. That's a fact. No, I can't lie. When I came out there when we did the interview, it felt like, I, I, honestly, like, it felt like, it, it, like I'm sort of like you never left. Like it was like, like everyday shit for you. It was, it, it, and and you was like, Shay, this is my home. We good out here. Do your thing. Walk right. down, get your footage, get your work. This is me. We good. <laughs> I, I'm a humble nigga. You know what I'm saying? I've been through everything. So ain't no way in the world I ain't going to be able to go back home. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? There's no way in the world I ain't going to go back home. I don't even believe right. in shit like that. Niggas don't know me for none of that. My hood, we was like this. Even the dopest drug dealers, killers, and all that, they was humble. I grew up around that shit, but they'll bend you in a heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't the flossy place. It wasn't flossy neighborhoods. No disrespect to the floss and canarsie. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't flossy niggas. That's kind of how that regular rich shit came about with me. You know what I'm saying? Shout yeah. out to regular rich. Um, we would, They were type of niggas that had money. But dressed down, cool, casual, calm, sweats, discus sweats, but had a whole heap of cash. You know what I'm saying? So that regular rich Monica came from that kind of upbringing. You know what I'm saying? We regular niggas, but had paper. Yeah. So I kind of took that and ran with that because that's how we lived. Nah, yeah, I showed love when I came out there. He was like, yo, Shay, come here, take that, take that Mets hat off, put this shit on. Yeah, right. I said, man, you got on fire, hundred percent. You know what I mean? You got yourself. one of them shits, you know what I'm saying? 100%. Yeah, so your, your merch, you got them, you got, they, they going to be for sale and everything like that? Absolutely. They, they are, they, I'm, I'm taking pre-orders now, you know what I'm saying? I had to regulate that. I don't want to very far off the topic, you know what I'm saying? I know you got some good questions you want to ask. Nothing you Nothing you Okay, think. cool. So, yeah, um, that's basically it. You know, East New York is, is a crazy place. It's, it's still crazy, but it's not like how it used to be. A lot of things have changed, you know what I'm saying? A lot of us have grown. A lot of us are, you know, are, are missing. A lot of us are, you know, making their way, you know what I'm saying? Still uh, striving, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, um, East New York, at this time, we, uh, we're we getting into the to the 90s now. Now, the 90s, the 90s was a little different than the 80s, of course. You know what of I mean? course, I'm, I'm a little older. Early 90s, yeah. I'm, a little, I'm a little old. I'm 13, 14. Yeah, it's things are crazy too. now. Now, now, you know, you got the you got Uptown, which is Harlem, Bronx, mm -hmm. Brooklyn. Now you got the niggas. They always been getting money, but now they getting money and style is changing. Now, are you changing? Because you always, you always said Brooklyn niggas started a lot of the fashion. I, I could, I could admit they, it. They say Brooklyn niggas is always fly. We, we, the reason why we always fly because that shit, it's, it's not what's on you, it's, it's what's in you. That's that regular rich shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what that shit is about. You know what I mean? That shit ain't, that's self-explanatory. You know what I mean? Yeah. Our, step, our step is different than everybody else's. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect to all other boroughs, one love to the whole city and shit like that. But our step was different. You know what I'm saying? So when we came out with our shit, we came out with our shit. Although every city had, every borough had the same shit. Guest jeans, use damage. We just put that shit on different. You know what I'm saying? We look different. Yeah. Columbia and all that shit like that. Yeah. So at this time, you have no idea that you wanted to be involved in music. No, I was a I was a basketball player. I played ball. Yeah, let's talk ball. about that. I was, I was nice at ball. I know because we got a chance to play ball in, in, in the early days too. When niggas right. in a when niggas in shape. Crazy, nasty. So yeah, your brother dunking on niggas. 
Yeah, yeah. I know this. So let's right. talk about the basketball. Uh, and, and your neighborhood basketball was. Uh, is Booger Smith from East New York? No, Booger's from Fort Green. Shout out to my nigga Booger. Booger's from Fort Green. Okay. Only reason why I say Booger Smith is Booger name been coming up a lot on the internet lately. And that's my nigga. He's lit right now. That's my nigga. He call, he don't even call me by Ray Dorsey. He call me by Bang City. Yo, what up, Bang City, my don? Shout Facts. out to my nigga Bugs. Worth everything. Mm -hmm. Fort Green like my second home, so that shit history. We'll get into that too. I love Fort Green. Facts. So I'm saying basketball was it, it, you know that it, it, it was yeah that that, that that was it. That was that's what I saw. That was the only way I saw getting up out of that motherfucker playing basketball at that time. I didn't have no superstar drug dealer dreams at that time. I'd be lying. <laughs> I, I thought I was gonna make it out the hood playing ball. Facts. Word. Not. I mean, you know what and they then, say, man, Biggie. You're a Biggie. Biggie said it. Biggie, you know what he said. Uh, jump shot or sling and crack rock, whatever. Like, yeah. So Cam, I, I feel you. You know what Cam, I mean? Cam said it best. Sports, drugs, and entertainment was the only way out. <laughs> Shout out to Cam. Hundred percent. Yeah. All right. So. Like I said, the things are changing. So you're playing basketball. So right. you, being at that park is dangerous. It's your school. It's the park behind your building. It's the right. park to keep it real. You have to go to this park. Nigga, you you want to come outside? Yes, that's what I mean. That's, that was kid, it. You, have, you have no choice but to go. This is your park. It, nigga, you wasn't going to play basketball in the Bamas. You getting shot over there. You ain't from that side. I'm from yeah. the other side. I'm from the PA side. Pick, pick yeah. and add, Pennsylvania Ave side. We that's where you wanted to play ball. You bet it was it was gonna be in that court or Gersh so, or, or 302 or anything on our side. Yeah, so that's what I mean. So what years would you say in your neighborhood where you say you saw coming up as a kid, like you know what? Things are drastically changing now in the neighborhood, getting nasty. Like because I, I know 90, I would say eight ninety. To like 94 was disgusting. Out of control. I remember vividly because at that time I'm 13 years old, 14 years old. I'm packing bags at Seatown. Biggie Smalls just came out. That's the first time I heard Biggie Smalls. Unbelievable around that time. So things were changing then. And that was when hip hop landed on my doorstep. Like I always fucked with hip hop. Like my brother was a big Red Man fan. I'm a big fan of Red Man. So hip hop was always, you know, coming through the waves but like I said I was playing ball and then I'm I'm hustling at that age I was always a hustler packing bags everybody know that I was packing bags when I was 13 14 and then that's when shit started to change I started to see a lot of shit like you know what I mean I wanted more shit my mother couldn't afford things like that you know what I'm saying so right. we had to get it out to get it out the mud on our own so that's where I started packing bags at 13 14 years old playing ball and then I saw things drastically change. 95, 96. I remember Vivi like that was when Hove came out. Like, that's how I based the life yeah. of my years off of yeah, these albums. You know what I'm saying? So I know where I'm at. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. I I mean, I see, I feel you with that one. Okay, so when you first heard Biggie Smalls, what was your like, you know, you say you packing bags, you hear unbelievable on the radio. What are you thinking? I'm like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> but when I soon I knew he found out he was from Brooklyn, but I heard party and bullshit before. You know what I'm saying? Like Larceny was a, was a, a from Junior Mafia from Junior Mafia was the classmate of mine in 292. Crazy. You know what I'm so when I saw him with the Junior Mafia around that time, I'm like, yo, wait a second, this shit is happening too fast. That, that rap shit happened so fast, and it just was like a part of your life instantly. You know what I'm saying? So after I heard that, and I know he's from Brooklyn, he was talking that the ultimate Brooklyn story at that time. Biggie was God to me. Word to Word to yeah. you, you saw I had the Biggie socks on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was everything. Biggie was, Biggie was everything to Brooklyn niggas at that time. At least for me, he was. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel the same way. Yeah, that's that, that that's where you know you you're going where I wanted to go with this because because bro, I mean, like I said, going to do the behind the scenes video shoot with you and seeing the because you know I've seen that on the internet for years that painting I think it's been there for like five six years right 
No, not that, not not specifically right there. Yo, see, this is the crazy. And shit. like, I, what that? How many of them is there? The fucking t a million of them now. I figured that. I thought a that million. was the one I'm always looking at on the internet. That one right there is relatively new. I that was the first time I've seen that one. I also, you the first one to put it on the internet. Yeah. I'm Ray, Yo. I'm Ray motherfucking Dawson, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> fire! Fire! No, that was love. That was, I, you know what? You're right, because when you think about that, a lot of those morals are, are spread it out by themselves. There are three people on there. Right. And Sean Bright. Bryce. It's Sean Bryce. 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 Yes. Yes. That was a, that, and that wasn't even premeditated. That was, you know, strictly shout out to Fire Factory. And their staff and shit like that. I I, I presented some uh, a kind of vision to him, and once I said that to him, he automatically came up with the backdrop. That was his idea. I never seen that fucking backdrop in my life. Nah, he's, he's don't, you know how no, I don't come down. Good, I don't come good. down that way. You know what I'm saying? Nah, good dude. And he's good to work with. Nah, very very professional too. You know what I'm saying? Very. No, but he got his little thing with him. He let yeah. you know like, yo, I need this done right now. You know what I mean? I, I see them. I see them getting. I see them getting like you know, like because you know some directors will sit there and BS and let you know they won't get the work done. Charging. Remember back in the day they was charging niggas for the hour. Right. Video shoots for three days. Son, of, he, son didn't bullshit me from the door. I can tell you another story how we met as we further proceed. But um, someone with that bullshit and I like Stern. I'm a cancer nigga, son. You can't beat. You can't. Beat around the bush with me. You got to tell it to me straight. You know what I'm saying? I don't respect that old yes man shit. I don't respect that. Tell me how you feel. Tell me what you want. And I'm going to see if that's what I'm going to accommodate to. Although I ain't, I've never been a pushover. You know what I'm saying? So, but I ain't, I don't have to present that kind of image like I'm super tough. I know who I am. Niggas cross right. those boundaries and then we'll figure that out after that. But I'm saying I like the way he works. He's stern and he's, and he's direct. I respect that kind of that energy. So, Shout out to Fire Factory and um, the way they handle his business. So you too as well. You know what I'm saying? No, hundred percent. No, we had a great time. All right, now let's get back to the source of uh. Let's. Right. I want to go back to the after the Biggie Smalls. So after the the you heard the Biggie Smalls, you say, okay, this guy is from Brooklyn. You know, I like what he's bringing to the table. I like party and bullshit. Now he got a hit on the radio. Now I'm down with Biggie. So Jay Z comes into play. Being from Brooklyn, how does that play? When Jay, I always wanted to know this. How did that play when Jay Z came into play when you were already sold on Biggie? According to me, but I know he was always around. Oh, but yeah, not for guys that. like me. According, I'm up in West. Jay Z comes after Biggie to me. Uh, he does. It's Biggie first, Hov second. Right. Exactly. Hov and Nas are gonna be second. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah. So how did that play on? How did the Jay Z shit play on in regards to? The Biggie shit, to be quite honest, that shit was like a left hook out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Biggie was talking the ultimate shoot him up, bang, bang, the normal stick him up shit type music. And then Jay-Z came with the ultimate hustler shit that not, I was surprised that I even understood what the fuck he was talking about that time. Because I don't even think I had a pack yet. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah. Jay made... Jay made niggas want to get bombs and shit like that. <laughs> Cheek, chicken, chicken jacks and all that kind of shit. And that ever, because the TNT was smashing niggas, so you had to know how to get it done. So that's how he came on the scene. So Jay-Z, to me, was that ultimate hustler. He told the ultimate hustler story from Marcy. It was crazy. My father and them is from Marcy Peas. So it's crazy how that even worked out, how that planned out. And then Back DJ Clark Kent. I knew I knew from then that he used to fuck with Big and Jay. Oh, so first, see, yeah, I want to get to when, <laughs> we're gonna lead up to when he comes to the block. But right. before we get there, I don't want to forget this. So you knew who Clark Kent was when he when you first met him on the block. I never saw him before. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think I ever saw him. I always heard about him. You always seen it back then. That was when you was open up CDs. You see the credits. It said DJ Clark Kent. Everything. That was when I was reading the credits and shit like that. You would see Superman Entertainment produced by DJ Clark Kent. You always knew who he was. It was like a 
a figment of your imagination type shit. Like you didn't know who he was. But when I found out he was what who he was, it's like, oh, that's Clark. That's the nigga that fucking dealt with Big and Jay. You know what I'm saying? So Thanks. the correlation of that was crazy to me. You know what I mean? The story behind this shit is crazy. You couldn't even make this shit up. If they paid me, I couldn't make this shit up. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. so much, it's so much to unpack when it in regards to that. But yeah, Jay-Z came like a came a pause. He came around like a like a left hook out of nowhere. You know, although he was okay. doing his shit. But well, I, okay. I'm glad you said that. Because now, all of this is going to lead up to right where I, I, where I would like to go with this interview. So you can honestly say, honest opinion, you were feeling Jay-Z more? I, I couldn't say I was feeling Jay-Z more because like I said, I heard Biggie first. And once I heard Biggie, I was like, I don't even know how I don't even I don't even have the, the correct words to, to say how that how them records made me feel, that ready to die project made me feel. So he wasn't better than Jay. Uh, no, he wasn't better, excuse me, he wasn't better than Big. He was like a breath of fresh air from another Brooklyn's perspective you know what i'm saying like hip-hop was to me was just starting to evolve even though it was out already but it was evolving at the same time and i'm growing up with that shit you know what i'm saying i'm, gro I'm growing up with that yeah because the only reason i ask you that is because for me i don't want to say biggie's a little bit too old for me but i feel like when he came out in my age for me when biggie came out I kind of wasn't interested yet. But mm. when Jay-Z hit the scene, for me, I was like, well, this nigga's doing what I'm trying to do at this moment. Him and, him and Mace was trying to do what I was trying to do. That's This is what I'm trying to say. But that's why I asked you that question. Because the question everybody had is, who's better, Biggie, Jay-Z, or Nas, of course. So, and you being from Brooklyn, right, from East New York, these are things that, you know, you're in the heart of, of you're in the middle of all of this. Big. You say your father from Marcy. Come on. Marcy Project. You know what I mean? So, Will so realistically, Will you can say Jay-Z. Murder and Willoughby, pardon me? Realistically, you can say Jay-Z. I could say Jay-Z, but before, I, this is in 88, I'm in Marcy. I, I didn't, Jay-Z, I wasn't even, that shit wasn't Jay-Z and that rap shit wasn't even on my mind. I didn't even, I wouldn't, right. know, I wouldn't know Jay-Z was from Marcy. If I fucking wanted to in 88, you know what I'm saying? Or 92. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't know. That shit yeah. I told you, it came out of nowhere. It was like, yo, and then it, everything just resonated. Jay-Z to me, his music was more personal. It's like more intimate. Like he made he made things more sensible to me. Biggie, I, that was a vision. He I seen the I seen Brooklyn when when Biggie rapped. When Jay-Z, when Jay-Z rapped, he told the great American Brooklyn story. Mm -hmm. to me. So that made me feel like lean in toward that direction because at that time I'm not going to hold you Shay. When I first heard Jay, I was fucking thrown so far back, way further back than when I heard Biggie. Biggie, when I started, when Biggie started to, you know, come with his shit as, you know, at, before on um, his second album, remember Jay already, Jay was on his way. No, let me, let me bring it back. I think I heard Brooklyn's Finest first. Clark, Clark can't produce Brooklyn's Finest. And I heard them together. So it was like one and two, freaking frack shit. You know Jay why? was the, you know was the left hook, question? Biggie was the right hook. You know why I asked you that question? Why? Because a lot of niggas don't know this. And this is a real fact. You guys were supposed to be formed to be like the the state property. Absolutely. We're gonna get there because you guys were a whole group of niggas that spit like Jay Z. Am I lying or not? I'm not. You know, I'm. We was them niggas. We still them niggas. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking we about the niggas. bars, the way y'all was spitting. Oh yeah, we they were like Jay Z slick punchlines. Yeah, they were yeah. like I'm talking about. It was five six niggas of yeah. slick talk. Like a rap. Listen, Leaf, bars, 
that can rap. Am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong, my nigga? Niggas can rap. 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 That's a fact. Niggas you know what I mean? That's why when I told that story to my man, I was like, yo, this is real story. Like, I came downstairs in Quad Studio and saw a whole bunch of niggas like me. I was more of an artist that was like, like. Hold this, hold that first. See, this is where it get tricky at. None of them niggas was around. When, remember, it was just one clock. Scoop me up. Them niggas wasn't around. I didn't know none of them niggas yet. I didn't know none of that bang city. I didn't know none of them guys up there yet. Oh, so you was running with Clark by yourself? Yeah. Oh! I don't know none of them niggas yet. Got you! This is a fact. <laughs> yeah. Clark used to come pick me up every other fucking day. Or I used to go check him in his, in his uh, I can say it now, he's, when he used to live in Canarsie or Flatlands. Yeah. When he had, when he was still had a, a million fucking crates in his crib, Clark brought me up like that. You know what I'm saying? I I, I got brought up like that. None of them. I didn't know oh, none of them. Was this when you was running with when, when, when you was? How, how old? How old was I? This was the, this was the, this was the this was the the prime Jay Z era years. Prime Jay Z era. These are like ninety eight, ninety nine, right? Yeah, you know what's even crazier, Shay? You don't even. No, know. wait, hold on. <laughs> You're running around with Clark in ninety eight, ninety nine. A hundred keys. All facts. What? When he had the when he had the five. Dude, this is Clark Kent's prime of his life. Nigga had the S five, all black, nigga. This is the prime of Clark's life. I remember going to Miami. They had like like artists doing shows like fucking Trick Daddy, Jay Z, and then you walk by a club, it would just say Clark Kent by himself. He was that nigga. He's still that nigga. Clark was doing parties by himself in Miami. Do you remember the year when we was out there 20 deep with them Clark World shits on? Clark World? Yes! Shit? That shit is course. documented. That's 2000. That's 99-2000. That's documented. crazy, fam. But I didn't, yo, I didn't look at it like that. Because the time when I saw y'all, this was 2001? 2000? 2001, 2002. Bet, that's a fact. So, that's a fact. You already have been doing four years, three years with Clark before that, my nigga? This shit is crazy. Like, what was it like with Clark, bro? Man. Yo, we kind of skipped over a lot of stuff, but yeah. you my nigga, we're going to do shit right around Brooklyn. Right. We're going to do all types of interviews. Let's get into this real quick, man, because I'm interested in this. What was it like with Clark? I ain't going to hold y'all. This shit was incredible, you know what I'm saying? Clark knew everybody at that time, you know what I'm saying? I'd be in the studio with Scarface. I'd be in the studio with Pink. Pink? I'd be in the studio. Fucking Pink. Pink is That's a super. Crazy. I'm in the studio with RZA. Pink and RZA. I'm in the studio with Raekwon. I'm in the studio with Trackman. I'm in the studio with 50 Cent. Real talk. None. Bank City wasn't. I wasn't with them niggas yet. We wasn't with them niggas yet. Nah, that, that wasn't even thought of yet. So what, Clark wanted you on some like solo artist type shit? He was or he just was introducing you to the game. Like, bro, come run with me. You from the hood. You my little nigga. Let's run around for a little while first. Let's build the bond first. That's what that's niggas don't do first. That's what it was. It's a hundred fa hundred keys. That's how he did that. I didn't even know what the fuck he was doing. But I knew I was in the music business. I was with this nigga. I'm like, yo, the, all these niggas I'm watching on TV. And then I'm with this nigga. He with all these niggas. I'm like, wow, this nigga that nigga. <laughs> It was crazy. It was crazy. The yeah. list goes on. The list fucking goes on, my nigga. The list goes on. The list goes on. And that's how then we start to go to unique and quad and all that shit like that. That's when he introduced me to that. Because Clark wasn't even... I was rapping, but Clark... I wasn't good yet. I was good, but I wasn't good yet. And Clark wasn't with that shit. Matter of, you know, he got Jay-Z and fucking Biggie Small. You ain't just going to be putting out records with Clark. That nigga Clark put me through the ringer before he put out my first record with him. That's all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, yo, Ray, you got to marry the beat. You know what I'm saying? You could, you, you got to talk that shit, nigga. He, Jay and them niggas talk that shit. Biggie and them niggas talk that shit. Sauce no, Money right. niggas talk that shit.